round square up maneuver, which looks like this technically, which was designed to bring the cars back together. Now the thing about the all around square up is it does not appear in nature in any place. This is like the ketchup in a McDonald's you know, ketchup packet. It's not a tomato. It, there's no, no time ever until I think basically covering the half pass that anyone ever had to do this ever. So technically, I think it's only really existed for covering moves. And so the problem is, if you take a look at what we've been learning about structure tonight, it's kind of a little bit weird. So, so pull back a little bit so we can get my whole uh, self in here. And if I say to you, hey, take out a card, look at it, show it to everybody. Look over there. It's kind of a problem, right? Because now all of a sudden, I'm doing a kind of a big weird movement for no reason at the exact moment I was hoping to disappear enti entirely, right? And so that's the issue with sort of the Chris twist. So the thing about the gravity half pass is it was designed so that all you're doing is raising the pack to your fingertips. Again, I'll do it again here. It's designed so that all you're doing is raising the pack to your fingertips. And all the cards turn face up, or as many as you want. Now, the idea was Vernon's cover. The idea was Vernon's cover for topping the deck, raising the pack to your fingertips. It's a wonderful way to bring your hands together. So first we'll talk about the mechanics a little bit. Why is it called the gravity half pass? Well, because it's the same thing we were talking about with the classic pass. If you pull with your fingers, we can see it. So let me ask you all a question at home. Are these cards face up or face down? Face down, probably. But in this exact same position, if I move them to here, are they face up or face down? Who's to say? Really all depends on how you're looking at it. right? So if we start to pull these cards from here and pull them over, we're going to be pulling from here, we're going to be pulling them over, and you're going to see it. It's like trying to push Dan Harlan off the Grand Canyon from several feet back takes a lot of pressure. You gotta see it coming. Right. If I were to take Dan Harlan and stick him right over the ledge so his feet were dangling over, and then walk up and just sort of blow on his ear, he would fall over because he's already in position. So if you start with these cards in position, it's just a metaphor. It's just a metaphor. <laughs> that was apt. No, it's apt. apt. <laughs> like the pupil. So, at the same position, if I start here, and these cards are exactly in this natural position, which face down to everybody, but if I were to, from this position, go one degree past center, it's not like my hands are palm down, I'm just one degree past center, and then I were to let go with my thumb, look at how much my fingers move to turn these cards over. And that's the essential idea behind the gravity half pass. Okay. Now there's only one thing that's keeping me from actually just doing that. What is it? It's the cards above the break, everybody. The cards above the break, which don't want to do that. So what you got to do, start the gravity half pass, is you bend your hand down like so, bend your hand way down like so, which will feel uncomfortable. And you've got this nice deep grip. And again, I'm going to give all this to you, but if you get serious about the gravity half pass, you might want to find some illustrations somewhere and really go over them. But there's the position, deep, deep. It's like the bluff pass, only turned to the right. Deep. And so, when I come down, notice the way my wrist is bent. I start a little tense so that I can release and do the shift. So really what's happening from here is I come down here, I float up that wrist a little. Once I'm in this position, I float up the wrist a little. And that gives space for the maneuver that we just talked about. Now, of course, I'm not exactly right here. I'm here. And what I'm doing is I'm kicking with my pinky, and it's falling. But it's a very light kick because of that fulcrum created by this. I just really have to blow on it. I don't have to yank with my fingers. right? So I suggest that when you learn, even though later you'll be able to do it from remarkably close to here and still get no movement or flashing. But what I always tell the students is, you should really exaggerate the thing at first. You should exaggerate it and overdo it till you understand the principle. So I would start with the cards exactly horizontal like this, and I would come in like this, and I would float up my wrist a little bit, and from floating up my wrist a little, then I would let those kick over from there. Now when you get to that position, that's the halfway point. 
That's the halfway point. And I learned this position from Larry Jennings, actually, when I was out there with him and you when I was in school. Mm -hmm. Now at this point, this is where everyone makes the big mistake of doing this. That's where they get into the old trouble. So there's two things you want to do here. You want to take those cards and jam them against the left thumb. You want to jam them against the left thumb. Hard. They do not move from here. One of the reasons this thing looks good is because you'll notice I never, ever, ever remove that left thumb. See? Until after it's over. So what you do is you jam those cards into the left thumb and then you curl your fingers deep to the second knuckle, like that, keeping that position. And once you're in that position, you raise the pack to your fingertips. So raising the pack to your fingertips is not the cover. A lot of people see this and they think raising the pack to your fingertips is why it's invisible. Not true at all. All it is is an excuse that, for having your hands together in the first place. That's really the point of it. So, and I do it in transit. So pull back a little so you can see the whole thing. So in real life, it's an in-transit action because as I'm coming to do it, I realize that there's a point I want to make and I raise my hand away. So already, I've lifted my gaze and brought my hand up to it and the actual act of bringing your hands together and raising the pack to your fingertips is done in transit, just like the coin trick we were talking about before. So you can find that pattern, just like music, once you know the pattern, you can find it if you know where to look in the situation. It's not always quite so obvious, but if you look for it and you demand the pattern, you'll find it and that's really what's gonna make the whole thing deceptive. That's the essential teach on the gravity half pass. Um, maybe I should run you through the revolution as it was performed with the gravity half pass. Sound good? Yeah. Okay. So, um, awesome sauce. So what I would do here is I take two uh, mates and I place them on the face of the deck. And as I spread off to have a card selected, I, uh, one, two, and I keep spreading, and then you go ahead and pull out a card. As you pull out that card and show it to everybody, I half pass. It's the same exact moment that we've been talking about this entire time. Look over there. I, as you're still looking over there, I get a break under one card. I take it back and say, would you be impressed if I could tell you the name of your card? And of course, I've just lifted the double, like so. Second finger at the upper left corner, thumb at the lower right corner, and pretended to look at it. Is that your card? I mean, would you be impressed if I could tell you the name of your card? And they're like, no, dude, I wouldn't be impressed if you could tell me the name of your card. And I'm like, yeah, but you don't think I got a double card here either. <laughs> so I'm like, oh, you're right. And as I say that, I exhale and pivot that around and it goes right back to the top of the pack, like so. Now, I do the revolution change, which normally I would have discussed by now. So you've got this double card sticking out of the pack. And this is based on the old Jerry Andrews color change. So what's happening is I'm pressing up with my first finger, my right hand's coming down, and this edge of the card is actually even with the balls below the finger. You don't want to be back from there, you'll see it. So you really got to check in the mirror, because if it looks great to you, it's flashing up there. If it looks terrible to you, then it's good up there. And what you're doing is, you're pressing up, against your hand as this comes out and over and around like that. So just to show you top speed, looks like this. And now you gotta wait. And this is the same situation we are talking about before about standing your ground. Because you're gonna feel a little weird that you got this card in your hand and you're gonna think, well, what am I gonna do now? But you've got to wait for that first effect to sink in. I mean, that's really the point. So at this point, you wait, two, three, four. You're going to hear someone in the back row go, whoa. And at that point, 